So you know that some materials have a very sharp yield point, right? A very sharp point where it changes from the elastic to the yielding region. But some of these right here uh, have a more gradual turn. Uh, and so for uh, materials, without the yield point phenomenon is what that uh, YouTube video calls it, phenomenon. Uh, so, so if they, without a sharp yield point, then to calculate the yield point or the yield stress, we will use the 2% offset method Use 2% offset method to calculate sigma y. So this would be the point where after you unload it, it still has a permanent deformation of 0.2%. Sorry, 0.2%. 0.2%. All right, so this is the point at which, if it was unloaded, it would have a permanent deformation of 0.2%, which is a strain of 0 0.002. So if you needed to calculate it, you'd actually kind of start at the 0 0.002, go up uh, the slope of E, and see where that crosses. Uh, see where that crosses the um, stress strain diagram right there. Okay. So for figures that don't have a sharp yield stress, you need to find the yield stress where after you let go, it has a permanent deformation of 0.002. All right. We're not going to do that uh, because. Uh, honestly, just it's really hard to grade when you are uh, guessing at the yield points and yield stress. So we're going to deal mostly with problems that have a very definite. Oh, there's my yield point right there. You know, here's sigma y. So you know, but just that's what you would use if you had a gradual change from the elastic region to the yielding region. And just you know that percent, let's, let's kind of give a defamation, percent elongation. So first of all, the elongation, I'm looking for the delta L, right? For the elongation, I'm looking for the change in length. Not the actual length, but the change in length. And so for percent elongation, I'm looking for the delta L over L, the strain uh, times 100. I mean, you know, that percent sign really is like 100. Just take the strain multiply times 100. So that's why the point oh oh two. A strain of 0 0.002 is the same thing as 0.2% elongation. So if I'm asking for the elongation, I'm just looking for the delta L. But the percent elongation is the strain times 100. If I just ask for the strain, Delta L over L. Uh, hey, if I ask for the length, if I ask for the length and you know how much it has stretched, so I've got a bar that's 100 millimeters long and it has stretched by 2 millimeters, the length is 102. So I, I'm just, just making sure, answer the question that it's asking. If it asks for the strain, just just 
just give me whatever was on that axis. But if it asks for actual lengths or, you know, elongation, I'm only asking for delta L. Does that make sense? Just, I see so many people answering the wrong, they did the math correct, but if I ask for the length and they tell me, well, the strain is 0 0.0034. Okay, that's true, but I want the actual length. So answer the, you know, whatever the question is asking. Okay, ductile versus brittle. All right, ductile stretch. Stretches, I'll say a lot. I don't know what a lot means, but it stretches before fracture. Uh, maybe you can think of it as a wide stress strain curve. If I show you two different stress strain curves, you should be able to tell me which one is more ductile, right? The one that stretches more before a fracture. Versus brittle, brittle materials do not stretch very much at all. They fracture real quickly. They don't, they don't stretch, right? They fracture really quickly fracture without stretching very very much so you should be able to compare two materials if you have if you can see both of their strain curves these are more brittle than these uh and also do you see this stretching uh, look at the axes. Most materials have different positive tension. Most materials have different tension stress strain curves than compression stress strain curves. So this would be our compression stress strain curve. Notice it's very different from the tension stress strain curve, right? This quadrant would be tension, this quadrant would be compression. Many materials have a much wider compression stress strain curve, brittle materials, than they do in tension. I think that makes sense. Think of some materials that can withstand a compressive force, but will are brittle. Okay, we're, we're going to stick with tension. So anytime you see any stress strain curves, it'll be stress strain curves in tension. 